You tuned in to Infinite Vibes, provided by Taste and Dash Radio. I am Moran, the man. DJ B Lex and D Lou are in the building as well. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And we are in the presence of somebody who's just been doing his thing for a very long time. And I'm pretty sure y'all familiar with the hits he has made. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners, my brother? Man, it's the world's best producer, June James, out the greatest city in the world, Houston, not the best state, Houston, Texas, man. I'm in the building live and direct. Hey, hey I love it. Nice. Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> Yes, man. So how you feeling, man? How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling real, real ambitious, real, real motivated. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ambitious and motivated. Why are you so ambitious? Why are you so motivated? Nah, because, so- I mean, it just ain't no better time than the day to get it. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. and life been real, real, you know, crazy for all of us all, for us all. So, you know, it just puts stuff in perspective for me to, you know, grind harder. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Facts. Um, Talk to us about your creative process during the coronavirus epidemic. Ooh. I mean, really ain't nothing really changed up for me. Because, like, you know, we do what we do anyway. You know what I'm saying? We be in the studios. We be or we be at the crib with it. So, you know, my creative process is just, you know, smoking the best. <laughs> 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 and having the best company around. You know what I'm saying? That's what you know, we take it from there. Absolutely. Yeah, What's yeah. your favorite, like, spot to create? Is it the house or the studio? Ooh, that's good. I think... The more and more I tap into like the professional, the game, the industry shit, uh, it re- I feel like it'd be the studio, but it'd be a certain vibe at the studio. It can't be too, too studio. It can't be too sterile. Right. It gotta have like a kind of homey vibe to it. So I like like a best of both worlds type of situation. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's I gotta up. have my my team with me too. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, because they are in the building as well. Right. Yeah. 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 Don't Nick play Cartel, with him. Shout <laughs> out to my boy Rando. Shout you know next producer up. You know out my city. He go, go go crazy. He right behind you. Hey. Oh. The shades on. Oh. In the cut. Oh. Mr. Can't rush the vibe himself. You know he what I'm saying? Got my boy AJ it. in the building too. My right hand man. My boy Rico in the building. My boy Bob. Uncle Bob, my assistant over there, looking like a magnum. <laughs> <laughs> in a cut. Dope. Dope. Yeah. Nice. Dope. So how did you get, how did you start? Like, I want to know the backstory. Yeah, I started in high school. Um, mm-hmm. My partner gave me Fruit Loops, a demo version, like hey. FL5. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just making, like, you know, it was like the crack version. So, like, you can only like, make beats on there. You couldn't save it. You couldn't export it. So we was just making them, making them, making them. And then I had partners at school that were rap. Mm-hmm. And eventually I saved us some bread and got, like, the um, real version. And we would just make songs for them and stuff, and it just kept turning into a hobby. And then we turn into a hobby. when I started selling beats in high school, we never really looked back. We just kept it going. And then I went from just wanting to like sell beats and like get pe- beats for like rappers and stuff locally to like mm-hmm. get to the name, like you know the popping names in my city and get stuff in the club and on the radio. You know, as you get older with it, you know your ambitions grow, ambitions grow bigger and bigger. So right. that's the you know the perspective that I looked at it. So. After that, it was like, okay, I want to get out of Houston now. So that's why I'm in the A, and that's why I be in L.A. and traveling, trying to spread the sound and the brand around, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Nice. Big facts. Yeah. Definitely been doing a great job spreading that sound around. Appreciate so, it. you know, what's it like for you? You know, you're from Texas. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel like Texas, y'all are just really on another run again. It feels Man. like. You know, we were just, we just, we just got We just got to get it organized. We having no run, but it's just like, it's oh. like, it's just because, like, it's so much talent there, and it, it can't help but come out, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, I feel like if he gets organized, like how, like how y'all got like a pipeline and like a whole like you know network of shit going out here, I feel like it can be something real special, like mm-hmm. something like you know for years to come. So and that's you know part of my job as you know my generation just coming up and we was a generation that kind of like didn't get the torch past us, so mm-hmm. we kind of had to figure it out on our own. Right. So like that's what you're seeing, you know what I'm saying? So that's when you say the going. torch wasn't passed, like, what do you mean like y'all? I mean like like the like it was just a big generational gap. Like you saw like the last people that came out of Houston was like Slim Thug and right. like Mike Jones, Paul Wall, and not discredit them guys because Slim Thug he looked that for a lot of people in the city did what he could do. Same thing with Paul Wall, but it's just like. As far as like the behind the scenes, you know, you know the movers and shakers, the gatekeepers, you know what I'm talking about, the niggas that can't really talk about. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? They can't, <laughs> you know, they can't, they can't yeah. shit from shaking, you know what I'm saying? And that's just, that just, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Basically, the niggas that keep, that reach down yeah. and keep a system going. Yeah, they keep it, yeah. they keep it going. And, it's, mm-hmm. you, know, and it's, you know, it's good for them, but it ain't good for the culture. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So, Are you born and raised? Yeah, born and raised. I'm from Eggers Homes from the north side. Mm-hmm. I'm from the same hood, Sim Thug from. Mm-hmm. Same hood a lot of niggas from. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What's on the side, we run like when it comes to the Houston rap scene. I feel like we run it for us commercially because like we the only ones to be popping to come out and make some shit shake. Like you know, like Paul Wall, you from the north? Chameleon, they from the north? Even the niggas that's popping today, you know, what I'm saying they from the north too. I mean, Travis Scott, he from Mo City. He ain't from the south or the north. He from like outside, mm. but like he doing this thing too, going crazy. You know, same thing with Max. You from Pearland? Mm-hmm. So you know, absolutely, man, absolutely. How did it feel for you when you got your first plaque? That shit was live, but at the same time, I, was, I ain't gonna lie. My team be telling me shit out of time. I really don't be lit about that shit. I be like, all right, cool. 
I be so like on to the next thing every time, so I don't really don't be having time. I ain't never like had a. I got partners who get plaques. They have a whole party, a whole mm-hmm. weekend behind it. Go, they go crazy. I ain't never did none of that shit. We just be like, okay, cool. Put that on the wall. You ordered it, it's coming? Okay, it's coming to the mail. Okay, we got it at the crib, you know what I'm saying? We just, it's on to the next one with me. You know what I'm saying? When I get the Grammy, that's when mm-hmm. we're gonna have to do something special, but it's plaques and that shit coming down a dozen. Coming mean, for a nigga like me, we working. <laughs> he ain't playing no game. I respect that. I respect. That. I mean, you know, t- you know, t- talk your shit a little bit nah, though, man. You know, respect. let let our familiars know. I mean, excuse me, let our listeners know who may not be familiar yeah, with fact. you know some of the hits you made. Yeah, I came in the game with Lucy and stuff, and I made all his hits for the most part. Like his biggest records, I made Every Day We Lit and I made Key to the Streets. Mm-hmm. Then after we split ways, I did Yosemite for Travis Scott. Mm-hmm. Then I did Put a Date on It for Yo Gotti. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a lot of stuff for like Roddy Rich. I did a song called Out the Mud for him that was really live. Um, I did When to Say When for Drake that just came out earlier this year. Congratulations. And I got that record going crazy right now with uh, T.I. and Lil Baby. It's called like Pardon. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is doing this thing. But I got a lot more shit on the way, though. And that's like in between shit. That's not all the shit in the name off the top of the dome. Understood. Yeah, we're going So crazy. you got your start with Key to, Key to the Street. Yeah, that's my first, like, big, big, big record. <laughs> and that's what in Atlanta. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. So, like, as a super producer, like, do you think it's important for you to, like, vote yeah, yeah, I don't even think I'm a super producer yet because I feel come like. Come on, bro. No, this is the only reason why. You're being humble now. Not, not humble. even on the humble <laughs> shit because this is, like, this is my job. It's my job to do that. You know, that's just my job. You know what I'm saying? I'm just really good at it. You know what I'm saying? But, like, at the same time, like, it's a level of consistency that I got to get through. I consider being a super producer. Like, Metro and them, they super producers. Like, you know, Weezy and them, they super producers and shit. Because, like, them niggas got shit on the radio nonstop. Yeah, not just locally, yeah. but nationally. Not No, not one or two places. But they doing whole projects with artists. So, it's just different levels, you know what I'm saying? So, I feel like I'm trying. That's the level I'm trying to get to. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Well, that's as a dope producer, like. There we go. <laughs> 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 he got that dope. So yeah, he's like, just good at everybody. Right, you know? he's just great. <laughs> yeah. But, like, do you have any artists that you're going to mold? Like, do you feel like it's important for you to mold artists as a producer or, like. Yeah, they want to, when, if they want to be molded, I don't got time for all that stressful shit. Like, I, I'd have artists that I don't put, like, the world behind. And them niggas couldn't stop going to jail. Mm. They, they get out, they fuck with niggas, you know, who out the blue. So they got money for me, or just switch up and shit like that, mm. and that shit took a lot out of me. But I got an artist that I'm pushing right now called Magic. I mean, not called Magic. His name is Magic, and we going crazy with him right now. Um, we got a take coming out with my my boy Money Moo. Shout out okay. to Money Moo. He doing okay. this thing going crazy. Absolutely. He got a single called Hidden right now. You yep. Check it out. Featuring uh, Money Bag Yo and um Fujiano. So he from Houston? Nah, Money uh-huh. Moo's from out here. No, I'm talking about Magic. Oh, Magic from Jacksonville, from Duval County. Oh wow. Yeah, but he cool. live out. But he live out here though. But like you know, he been hmm. with me. F- he been with me since he was like 16, 17, so I really been kind of grooming him from the beginning. So like, how old are you? Me, I'm yeah. a twenty nine now. Okay, cool. Officially, yeah, officially, so. it's real. Mm-hmm. Getting up there, mm-hmm. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you know. So like, you know, how does it feel for you? Because you know, you know, you humble, which is cool. But you know, there are a lot of producers who you know they want to be where you are. You no, know, I'm pretty sure you get people in your DMs like, "Yo, man, yeah, check- yeah shit, crazy." <laughs> Why so? Why I so? mean, because this is like, I can't, I can't. It realistically, like being 100, like ain't nobody helped me, and I ain't saying I can't help, I ain't, I ain't got the capacity to help nobody, and I done help a lot of people too. I put a lot of people in position, and I ain't, I don't do shit to get nothing back. But at the same time, like that shit kind of like I feel like it's stunted my growth some way as far as like me moving mm-hmm. and me giving myself traction and putting my time into myself. So mm-hmm. I really on some selfish shit more you know, now right now. Like I don't know selfish shit on some whole ass shit more so on like some self love shit like mm-hmm. putting that time into me type shit. So you know. ain't nothing. I can't help everybody right now because, like I said, nobody really gave us nothing. It was just me and my man, mm-hmm. like through it all, like through the trenches, like for real, for real. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So cool. I don't see nothing wrong with it though. Like nah, it's okay real. to feed into yourself and focus on you. And not even that, like I help folks for shit show, but like it's just like some shit people we be asking them to do be just like, damn, like how the hell, like how you even expect mm-hmm. me to do shit like that? And then like it's just like some shit be common sense type shit. The shit that you can Google, right. or shit you can just go out here and stop being. Right. You know, I'm just saying the type of shit niggas asking me to do. I'm like, man, come on, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it be, it be what it be. That's mm-hmm. real. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I feel like everybody in the room can relate to that. I mean, I know you know, you, you you really do talk about you know you know you say you know nobody helps you with nothing. Mm-hmm. What was it like for you overcoming that? Because I'm pretty sure you experienced people who maybe weren't studying you, trying to come back out of nowhere. Hey, bro, you remember me? That's how I would go through right now, period. That's really what I'm going through right now on like a whole nother level. Like motherfuckers like, act like I got amnesia or something. And mm-hmm. that should be funny as hell. Like I don't remember that shit. Like it was like, like it wasn't like a couple years ago, a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. But um, no, nah, I mean, that shit was just was what it was. I really didn't think about, think about it while I was going through it. We were just going through it because we had to go through it. Right. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, you, it is what it is. It's part you know of the game. But looking back, like, 
Like, I was kicking it with Nick Muir and Internet Money. You know, he won producer of the year, right. being mine. And he was like, you a legend, bro. You like a bounty hunter. You be out here just doing it by yourself. Da, da, da. I got a whole time. Like, and I ain't never looked at it like that until nigga said it. Like, on his note, because he kicking ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, one of my peers, he kicking ass on another level. So I'm like, for a nigga to say that like that, you know what I'm saying? Granted, he younger than me for shit show, but this shit still fucked my head up. Like, damn, niggas is looking up to me from that perspective too, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. but now it's just trying to take it to another. Actually, like you see, I'm putting my team together, right. mm -hmm. and I ain't doing it by myself no more. So, you know, we gonna do it bigger. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I honestly feel like in order for you to really reach a certain height of success, you have to expand. That's Thanks. why you got Amazon. That's why you have these big corporations. Like, if they was only thinking like, oh, just me, just me. Exactly. You gotta put people in position and pay people, man. You gotta really mm -hmm. just boss the fuck yeah. up. Yeah. And I had to learn that shit. That shit don't happen overnight. That shit don't happen in months or weeks. Right. That shit take years and times and yeah. bump your head and going back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Facts. real. Yeah, yeah. Um, talk to our listeners about something you had to overcome like was it was it like a placement that you thought you was about to get that you got excited about and it didn't happen that shit happened all the time oh, okay that shit just happened to me the other day i was sick uh. but at the same time it's like i'd be having to look at the perspective like you know this shit like it's like the league you know what i'm saying you're gonna have good games you're gonna have bad games but you know if you're consistently good at what you do you're gonna be great at what you do you know what i'm saying so Facts. i look at it like that but uh as far as overcoming shit i didn't been through it all we'd have been homeless you know what i'm saying we didn't mm. I remember, nigga, we didn't have, we had, I had to walk to the studio every day. I was on house arrest. Mm. And, like, I couldn't go nowhere but the studio in the crib. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't make the money I could make doing the other shit I was doing that put me on house arrest. Say less. So it was just <laughs> like, it was what it was. You know, that was really a real tumultuous time for me, but it made me work harder, you know what I'm saying? Because it made me just focus on what I was really good at versus focus on what could make me the money at the time. You know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's some shit I overcame. A lot of fake love. You overcome that shit all the time. It's, it's shit that I've been through. I can't even talk about. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just too deep. You know, not, not on them, like cry, tear jerk and shit, but just on some like you know, violent shit. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And here you are now, Platinum Records. You know right. what I'm saying? Legendary albums. Got a team that you putting together. Got in right yeah. the hit cartel, man. Gang, gang. <laughs> cool, 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 man. What are what are some other goals that you have for you outside of the Grammy? You know, what are some other man, the Grammy? Like I really like I said, I want to really put Houston back on the map. You know what I'm saying? The right way. And like for a long time, not just a couple of hits, not just a couple of artists, but make that shit like, you know, a new mecca, you know, for the for the hip hop scene, period. Mm -hmm. That's a big goal. Um a lot of my goals gotta do with that though. Like like I wanna put on producers, sign them, get them on, you know, create like I said, create a whole another wave of producers, you know what I'm saying? But that go with me when to put on my city, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um I'm actually really music oriented right now because that's the mode I'm in right now. I can't really tell you what's going to go down in 10 years because I ain't there, right, there mm -hmm. yet, but I know what I'm going to do next year. Mm -hmm. We're going to kick ass. <laughs> mm -hmm. Same thing after that, too. So that's what it is. Absolutely. 2021 mm -hmm. looking bright, mm -hmm. right? That's Absolutely. What's up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got to ask a question, like, not music related. Talk to me. <laughs> do, are your parents from Texas? My daddy, he was from Louisiana. My mama, she's from Texas. You don't, like, you, you don't. And I hate to say it, but you don't, don't sound like, like exactly. you from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a lot of places. Yeah. So, yeah okay. You actually say. sound more like Louisiana a mm. little bit. Mm. Okay. Nah. <laughs> Y'all don't hear we'll it? Take, we'll take it for what it is. Oh, okay. Nah, the ladies <laughs> fucking with you, dog. They fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, man, we always like the Indies, which is, you know, positive words of affirmation. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, what is some positive advice that June the Genius can provide to anybody? Man, on, bro? you know, if you got like you know a dream or goal, you gotta start that shit today. Mm -hmm. Don't be scary. Really get up off your ass and go get that shit. Like you can't. It ain't no such thing as perfect time. It ain't no such thing as shit gonna happen today. Like you gotta really go take that shit. You can't wait on no, no type of opportunity to just come your way. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying. And you know, generally live in the moment because when you be focusing on other shit, you really be missing the shit that be right in front of you. You know what I'm saying? That be the blessings of you. God be giving you everything you pray for, but you gotta be like you know mindful of that shit. And we be, you know, we be worried about the wrong shit. We would miss a whole blessing that be right in front of us. So get out there, you know, and try, try again every day. Mm -hmm. Real business. Big facts. Get man. up now, not later. Yes, nah, sir, not speak. later, man. <laughs> well, we definitely felt those words. And on behalf of us, we want to say thank you for coming to our show. Yes, appreciate you having me. Much love. love. Of our sponsors, we want to bless you with your own Chaotica eyeball. Oh, I got an eyeball. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir, Ski. Blue. Yes, sir, Ski. Fly Crippin, let's get it. Hey, yeah. so you know what this You do know what that is. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Please show that to the camera. Let everybody know you. we sauce you up all that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, man. So um, please give our listeners your Instagram, social media, all that, and uh, introduce any record that you got that you want us to play. Cause we're going to pop you up right now, bro. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, okay. 
Whoa, okay, that was real quick. <laughs> uh, my name uh June the Genius. You can follow me on Instagram. On Twitter, it's all the same handle, June the Genius, J-U-N-E-T-H-E-J-E-N-I-U-S. That's just June the Genius with a J, not a G. And um, you can really play that part by T.I. and Lil Baby, because that's what's really popping right now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Banger. Absolutely, absolutely. Infinite Vibes, Taste, Dash Radio, June the Genius. Let's get it. Boom.